the bond between mother and child can be unbreakable. A complex relationship is difficult to quantify, as when does it begin? In the womb? Postpartum? Regardless, the relationship in nature is vital for the life expectancy of the infant, as without a caregiver, food and security are not secured. But what if we could boil the mother-child relationship down to its basic components? Perceived security, comfort and nourishment. That is what today's topic sought out to explore, the nature of love. Although the experiments did not test the human mother-child bond, it did try it out on one of our closest cousins. I must warn you of the subject matter in this video. Although a fascinating dive into the psychology of motherhood, it does involve despair, sadness and arguably horrific results for the test animals. Taking this into account, I'm going to rate it here 4 on my ethical scale. For reference, 1 is completely fine and 10 being just outright evil. I've given this number due to the experiment not being as detrimental to the monkey's health as, say, the head transplants were. Although, in some cases, severe psychological trauma was inflicted on the test subjects. Of course, this video is about the controversial monkey mother studies by Harry Harlow. Welcome to the dark side of science. In 1981, the scientific community mourned the passing of a psychologist whose studies became a fascinating and sometimes controversial dive into animal psychology. Before we get into the experiments in the late 1950s, our story starts in Fairfield, Iowa in 1905 with the birth of Harry Israel, the third of four brothers. In 1924, he began to study psychology at Stanford University, being taught by a couple of notable scientists, one of whom would shape the young psychologist's future career. During his university career, Israel was under the watchful eye of Lewis Terman, developer of the Stanford Binet IQ test. He received his PhD in 1930, and under the advice of his mentor, Harry changed his last name from Israel to Harlow. Harlow started working at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He had asked for laboratory space, but this was denied. This was due to the university's animal testing laboratory being torn down. Initially wanting to study on rats, Harlow then gained access to Henry Villa Zoo, where he discovered the primates there would be preferable to rodents for his studies. In 1944, he left the university and worked various different jobs in the scientific community, including being the president of Division of Experimental Psychology at the American Psychological Association and head of Division of Anthropology and Psychology at the National Research Council. He returned to Madison University in 1956 and took the role of director of the Primate Lab. He was offered an abandoned building on the campus for his studies. This old rundown structure would be the location of his controversial studies into monkeys. During his work using monkeys, he devised several problem solving and intelligence tests, proving that by mere curiosity alone, the subjects would want to solve a puzzle. His studies would develop into different intelligence tests for a whole range of age groups. But he had a problem and that was a reliable source of infant and developing monkeys. Harlow set up a rhesus macaque monkey breeding colony to gain access to developing primates for his experiments. By doing so, his experiments would take a different course. Part of his program employed rearing the monkeys in a nursery away from their mothers, which is a controversial method, but Harlow had found it hard to do intelligence tests on infant monkeys with their mother around. He noticed a staggering difference between his reared infants compared to their mother reared peers. Most notably their behaviour as they were reclusive, had little in the form of social skills and took comfort from holding onto their cloth diaper cage linings. They also found that the subjects would experience severe stress and anxiety when the diapers were removed from their cages during routine cleaning. Harlow and his students were fulfilling the infant's physical needs but the team soon noticed the psychological deficiencies from nursery rearing. He also noticed that the infants that were mother reared but socially isolated from other monkeys also showed strange behaviour. 
either being introverted or aggressive when introduced to others. With the infants taking comfort from their cloth diaper cage linings, Harlow thought that this was due to the lack of a maternal figure and would become the basis of a new experiment. The concept of the monkey mother would begin to form in 1957 when Harlow covered a wire frame in a rough shape of a monkey with a diaper cloth. The new test apparatus was thought to be the minimum requirement for a rhesus monkey in terms of contact comfort. Now this leads us on to the monkey mother experiment and Harlow's famous paper, The Nature of Love. Harlow set out to study the development of affectional responses of neonatal and infant monkeys to an artificial inanimate mother. The study would create two types of monkey mother surrogates, boiled down to the basic components that a monkey infant would want, warmth and nourishment in the form of radiant heat from a light bulb and a single teat for milk dispensing. The first mother was a wire frame formed in a way to be adequate to provide postural support and nursing capability. The second was made from a wooden block with a sponge rubber covering, which was then itself wrapped in a tan coloured terry cough. Both were capable of providing milk and were warm. The only difference was the comfort element of the mothers, one being able to be cuddled up to and the other not. Both were designed with maintenance efficiency in mind, thus only had one teat per monkey and were able to have their warming light bulb replaced easily with little interaction between the test subjects and the technicians. For the initial experiment, both surrogates were placed inside cages of eight newborn monkeys. Four had the cloth mother lactate and the wire one not, and the other four had the opposite, so the wire mother could lactate and the cloth one could not. Initially, during the first few days of the newborn's life, they were hand-reared until they were able to explore the surrogates for milk. After which, for a few more days, supplementary hand-feeding was done until the newborn could fully feed off the surrogate. For the first 14 days of life, the cage floor was warmed and had a cloth lining. On the 15th day, the comfort flooring was removed and the proper experiment began, with the amount of time on each mother recorded. The monkeys were free to go to either mother if they so chose, with the lactating cloth mother unsurprisingly spent most of the time on their surrogate, using her as a source of affection and comfort. What was interesting though was the group that had the lactating wire mother. As the monkeys got older, they spent less and less time on their feeding surrogate and instead went to the cloth mother for comfort. During the experiment, it was seen in the long term that the monkeys with the wire mother that could feed would increasingly spend more time up to 18 hours a day on their cloth surrogate, spending on average under one hour per day on the one that could give them food. This meant that the infant monkeys were preferring the contact comfort and perceived affection. In all cases, regardless of which one provided the milk, the monkey would prefer the cloth mother for cuddling, proving that at least in the study that the mother-baby bond wasn't just created from nursing, but instead the capability for love and that it overwhelmed any other variable. Another eight monkeys were used as controls for the experiment, with each not having a choice of wire or cloth, instead four having a lactating wire mother and the other four having a lactating cloth mother only. Both control groups were roughly the same weight by the end of the study, meaning the wire monkey was said by Harlow himself, biologically adequate but psychologically inept. But there was one difference, and that was in their poo. You see, the control wire only mother group had softer stools hinting at psychosomatic issues. Harlow now sought out to test the bond between infants and surrogates by introducing the element of fear. In all cases of dual surrogate, the subjects preferred to go to the cloth mother when something scary happened. What was interesting was after a little bit of time to cling onto their cloth mother, the infants actually became confident enough to confront the scary object. This wouldn't happen if they were clinging to the wire surrogate. Next came the open field test, where each monkey was placed inside a six foot by six foot room with various items placed within it. Initially, the room had various toys and interesting objects, but no mother. When confronted by the strange and scary environment, the infant would curl up in a ball in a notable amount of distress. When a wire mother was introduced, no change was seen. 
but when the cloth mother, regardless if it had reared the infant, was introduced, the monkey would go to her for comfort, and after a while would then have the confidence to explore. Even if an obstacle was placed between the monkey and the cloth mother, the infant would make a beeline for her. A control group that had not had any contact with a cloth mother before was used in the open field test and the monkeys would be paralysed with fear regardless of the presence of a surrogate, but would eventually get some comfort from the cloth mother after several sessions in the test room. The test developed further by placing the cloth mother behind a glass wall with a scary object in between. Again like before, the infant that had been raised with the surrogates would run to her. Harlow then went to test how long the bond could last between surrogate and infant. Some of the monkeys were removed from their cloth mother after six months and placed in a cage of their own. After another six months had passed, the monkeys were around their first birthday. They were placed inside the original dual surrogate cage and the infant would go straight to the cloth mother. The same results were also shown in the open field test when a monkey would still run to its cloth mother for comfort in a scary and new environment. This meant that the test subjects remembered the comfort that they got from their mother and reverted back to their pre-isolated state. To further test the bond difference between control and surrogate monkey groups, another machine was devised called the flight box. The test rig had a scary object placed in one end behind a removable wall. The monkey would be placed in the middle of the box with two passages in front of it, one to a cloth mother and another to a hiding spot out of view from the fear stimulus. The results were rather predictable. When the scary object was revealed, the surrogate raised subjects would seek comfort from their cloth mother, whereas the control monkeys would run and hide down the other passage. Now the monkey mother experiments helped to prove the link between comfort and security in infants and how it was preferred over nourishment, which feels today like an obvious statement, but if it wasn't for the experiments like this, then we would still have a slightly harsh view towards child rearing. The studies did have a dark side, and that was the socially and emotionally deprived test subjects, which by modern standards feels wrong. Just looking at the fear in the monkeys' faces makes me sad. As a parent, I can see the sadness similar to a human child, and it makes me want to go pick up the monkeys, give them a cuddle, and tell them everything is going to be okay. The studies came under severe criticism at the time, and in the eyes of history have not come off well. One major mistake of the experiments was that the link in behaviour between human babies and rhesus babies was a bit tenuous. This was because although human infants grab to their primary caregivers, they do not rely on contact comfort as much as a monkey does. You see this in young children that are happy to play on their own and be pushed around in prams, whereas monkey babies are transported by clinging onto their mothers, relying more heavily on contact for survival. There are many more variables which are not addressed in Harlow's work, especially when it comes to human-child caregiver bonds. For example, financial, societal and cultural variables, which some of these elements are not factors in the society of the rhesus monkey. The social and maternal deprivation of the test subjects caused panic and anxiety disorders, which further added to the suffering of the heavily social-based rhesus monkeys. When introduced to other monkeys that had a more maternal upbringing, were socially stunted and showed signs of severe distress when in contact with their peers. Harlow studies and others like it are cited as being a fuel in part of the animal rights movement in the United States. Harlow went on to continue to use rhesus monkeys in his studies, which would go down a much darker path in the exploration of loneliness, isolation and depression, including a study apparatus called the Pit of Despair, which is most probably going to be a subject for a future video. Where would you rate this experiment on my new ethics scale? Let me know in the comments below. This video is a plain difficult production. All videos on the channel are Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike licensed. Play difficult videos are produced by me, John, in a semi sunny southeastern corner of London, UK. Help the channel grow by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Check out my Twitter for all sorts of photos and odds and sods, as well as hints on future videos. I've got Patreon and YouTube membership as well if you fancy supporting the channel financially. And all that's left to say is thank you. 
for watching.